Hey folks, welcome to Muse Talks. I'm Pete Lewis, this is Claire Church. We run a venue called the Muse Performance Space. And since we've been down and no concerts, everything's canceled, we wanted to reach out to some fellow musicians and see how they're doing, what they're doing to get through these times and hopefully collect some funds for them. So I'll have some links once this is posted or you can see right now with this fancy piece of paper, there's a Venmo link Muse, at Muse Performance Space. And then there's a PayPal button on our website, www.museperformancespace.com. So um, part, you may or may not know this if you're not a musician that makes uh, their living playing music, but musicians have lost all of their income, 100% of their income, unless they're teaching. And um, musicians that were the most busy professionally probably aren't teaching and um, have lost all of their income. So part of, oh, here's Jasper to say hello. Part of, the, part of the reason we're doing this is to try to get just a little bit of money to these musicians and sort of just keep them, keep them occupied and find out, but really just check in on them too. We just want to see how everybody's doing. So today we have esteemed drummer who's, who's called by everybody in town and uh, his name's Drew Heller, who I first met, I think playing with Adam Barczyk's big band a few years ago. And um, kind of came on the scene and is, he's just been playing all over the place and just sound great. You're a lot of people's favorite drummer. And so we, we want to hear you play a little bit and then a little bit of background on, you know, how you got started and things. So you want to play a little bit for us first, Drew? Uh, sure. Well, first of all, uh, thanks Pete and Claire for having me on. I really appreciate being here. And, sure. Um, I just want to say, man, when we when we get back to work, I cannot wait to go to the Muse for some concerts, both as a <laughs> listener and a performer. You Thank know, you. You guys' space is just such a unique, beautiful, wonderful space where I, you know, I feel free to express myself uh, and um, <clears throat> to play artistically whatever direction I want to play, and that is just so rare. So thank you guys. Thank for you. What you? Yeah, do, that was that was the whole point. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> so I was thinking this morning, um, you know, it, it may not be that fun for most people to listen to solo drums. So I think I'm going to take a stab at playing a melody on the kit and it. then playing a couple choruses. So okay. um, uh, sometimes when I'm when I'm talking to my students about, uh, you know, what's the best way to learn a tune, you know, I, I give them a kind of a five-step program and the first step is to to learn how to sing the tune correctly that so that's in tune and in time and then the second uh step is to play time on the ride cymbal play the rhythm of the melody line on the snare then the third step is to do the same with the bass drum fourth step is to do it between the snare and the bass drum and then fifth step is to attempt to kind of outline the um the melodic contour of the melody. So I'm gonna sound not very good right now because uh, I, because <laughs> I'm gonna play a tune that I don't know super well, but I'll try to outline Benny Golson's Stable Mates. Ooh, wow, okay. ooh, picking a hard one. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I have, I have no fear of failure. <laughs> so, in case, in case anybody's wondering, this is, this is Stable Mates. In, in case you can't hear it. So. <laughs>
Jasper likes it. Yay! <laughs> he was digging it, man. That's awesome. Yeah, man. That was something I did when I was working with Paul Romain. We did a bunch of that. Um, yeah. Using the bass drum for all the ands, like in a bebop tune, which was. Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 So we did a lot of bebop tunes. So it's fun, fun to hear. And I've also heard Jeff Hamilton do it all on the snare. I'm sure you've seen that. Man, it, what a master. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's actually the first time I ever saw uh, a drummer play a melody on the kit was a Jeff Hamilton clinic, you know, and I believe he came out and played uh, Now's the Time, you know. Yeah, so. stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, the true, can we get the. Yeah, I got to get rid of our. our sorry, crazy. our animals are uh, <laughs> acting up here. So <clears throat> I know that you're from the Midwest, Chicago. Can you give us a little background, uh, like where you grew up, who who were some of your main influences, you know, and why you got into playing drums and things like that? Sure. Well, actually, Pete, I'm, I'm from Spokane, Washington, Washington State, oh. um, which is the, um, uh, it's right on the border of, yeah. of Idaho. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, I'm from the inland Northwest. Yeah. Um, and uh Actually, I kind of technically, I mean, that's the that's the biggest town that was near me. But technically, I grew up out in the country. Um, the closest real town was this little town called Spangle, Washington. Um, and I grew up uh, on uh, out in the country. Um, and actually, yeah, my high school, my graduating class, I think, was 30 people. So I, I came from... Uh, really small school and really how I got into music, um, I was really just self-taught. Uh, I had some, my dad had a few cassettes that um, like uh, some, uh, some Led Zeppelin, Steely Dan, uh, Fleetwood Mac. And I, I, had a, I had a little beater kit and every day when I'd come home from school, I'd just go right to the drum room and I, had a little ghetto blaster and a pair of headphones and I put on these tapes and I'd play along to them every day. And that was kind of my start on drums. Nice. Um, but then he, I believe he had a cassette of uh, the West Montgomery album, Smoking at the Half Note. Mm -hmm. So that was the first jazz record I ever uh, listened to. And so once I heard that, I, I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is a lot different than anything I'd ever heard. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Cobb's drumming on that record just had this clarity and this lightness and this uh, musicality that was just so beautiful. And so I, from there, I got really into, uh, you know, jazz, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, was, I, I decided I wanted to play music in some form, like as a professional by the time I finished high school. So I decided to go to music school after that. And I did my undergrad work in Spokane at, at a school called Whitworth University. Um, and uh, I have two degrees from there. I have a, I have a percussion degree and a, kind of a, a jazz uh, studies degree. Um, and then after that, uh, I had, uh, I, I hung around Spokane for maybe four or five years before I moved out here. And uh, I just played gigs. Uh, there was some really fine musicians out there that that uh, taught me through mentorship. You was know, was Dave play. Dave Hagelgans out there? Dave Hagelgans was one of my big big mentors and influences. Incredible tenor player. Yeah. Uh, fly fisherman. <laughs> yes. He's a great guy, man. Uh, he, yeah, and he's really he's beautiful cat and he's just I mean, really quirky, you know, like yeah. really interesting quirky dude. So yeah, he was definitely a. a big mentor of mine uh, he lives in Pullman uh, Washington which is about 90 miles south of Spokane okay so he would come up I had a I had a weekly jazz gig that I did for about five years at this uh, bar called the swamp and uh, judging from the title you it's about what you'd imagine it was like a <laughs> It was like a blue collar bar on the wrong side of the tracks, you know, like cigarette smoke, pool tables. But I, I just wanted to play jazz so much that I kind of forced this jazz night into this place. And we had a good run. We did like every Tuesday for five years there. Wow. And I would have, uh, uh, I would have a, um, 
I would be the one guy that was there every week because it was my gig. But I, I, I just, I called musicians that I really liked and would make different bands. And that was kind of my training ground for jazz. I was, um, was that gig, you know? Nice. So, and then, you know, after, after, after that, you know, um, I, I moved out here. I've, I've been out here for, uh, coming up on seven years now. And I got my, I got my master's at CU in Boulder. Um, and yeah, I've been playing out in Denver ever since. Yeah. That's yeah. For, I don't know why I thought Chicago, but, um, uh... Well, I think um, but, Ed Brazil's from Chicago. Maybe and, is that, uh, yeah. Maybe that's the... <laughs> Sorry, man. Maybe that's the connection. No, we, not at all. We lived in uh, Portland for a little bit. Or is that where we Yeah, met, we right? met Dave in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> he was there for a little bit when we were there. And uh, we were pretty good friends. Yeah, I took some lessons we with him. And, I mean, we're contemporary, like, in age. But he just could play so well, you know. And, but he, he was didn't really care. He, he was more cons wanted the fish, and was yep. into that, you know. But you know, <laughs> that's right. He was into some other stuff too, though, like yeah. cooking. I don't know. He had a lot, a lot of little hobbies, more hobbies yeah. than saxophone. That's for sure. Yeah. When I was playing with him, he he he's kind of a nerd, man. Uh, he's it, a nerd. He, he was super super into like he had built like a state of the art video game room in his house and he was really really into like video game car racing games and i thought he was joking but then i went to his house one time and it's no it's like surround sound huge speakers you know state-of-the-art couch it's like everything so it's, he's just an interesting quirky dude but man what a what an amazing brilliant musician and and just a sweetheart so shout out to dave if you're listening man maybe we'll have to send mm -hmm. this to yeah. him <laughs> so <laughs> So something I've been asking a lot of musicians is like, how are you doing like physically, mentally, all of a sudden, no gigs, you know, no contact with people. Are you doing okay? Uh, well, um, the honest answer is it's a very challenging time. Uh, you know, um, I'm doing my best to try to stay sane, but like you said, it's quite an experience to have uh, at the risk of sounding dramatic, quite the experience to have everything that you hold dear be instantly taken away from you. And what I mean by that is I, music is my passion and playing it is my passion and like having like all of your gigs just immediately disappear. And then to couple that with the fact that I, I because of the social distancing thing, I haven't seen a person in person in over three weeks now. So that can do some funny some yeah. funny things to your mind you know so yeah. Yeah. um the the honest answer is yeah i uh i'm healthy but it's it's a very challenging time you're just in a drum bunker i'm in a drum bunker you know <laughs> uh, are you are you able to get outside do you get outside and walk around a little bit and yeah i, I you know i try to do a daily exercise routine and yeah. you know um and I've gone to the grocery store, obviously, so I have seen people, but yeah. I haven't had any close interaction with any friends in mm. three weeks. And yeah. So it, it, it is a challenging time, and I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely missing my, my loved ones right now. Yeah. We have found, like, this Zoom thing has been great, you know, even connecting with our own kids and family. And, I mean, it's not as good as the real thing, but um, it's, it's, it's something. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I'm I'm glad that this is happening in the in the age of uh, of technology where we can actually see each other and talk to each other, even yeah. if we're not in the same room. <laughs> do you see this um, way things are right now? Do you see that moving forward and kind of impacting the way you know perhaps the way things will be in three or four months, or do you think it'll just kind of turn back around where it was and you know? It's going to take you know a while for the boat to turn around, but or do you, you know do you see a shift in the way things will be, or just kind of back to normal? Well, um, honestly, I see a shift happening, but I think it's going to be for good. Uh, I don't think that it's going to be worse. I think it's going to be better than ever when we get back because I know, speaking for myself and for all my musician friends that I've been talking to on the phone this is the longest I've ever gone in my whole life without playing music with a person in, in person. And I feel kind of like a caged animal right now that's getting poked with a stick. 
So <laughs> when I finally get set free, there's going to be an enormous amount of intensity to my musical output. And then speaking from a music appreciator standpoint, I think they are just as starved as we are to enjoy music and to support it. So I think we're going to see a renaissance of uh, of art and music and social gatherings. It may not come back immediately, but when it does come back, it will come back ferociously. That, that's how I feel as well. Although I feel like this, these new technologies are they're, they've been here, but we're starting to use them more may benefit, you know, maybe you'll reach more people if you do something online or be able to get more students, you know, because you're teaching online, you now you're more comfortable with the technology. So I see it yeah. as a positive thing, even though there's a lot of bad things happening right now. Yeah, well, and you know, I, we probably as a society and as a world, we probably just needed to reset, you know, I, mm -hmm. we, we haven't as a world been aware of the immense uh, trauma we're putting on the climate, you know, and, and I, I have a suspicion that this may be just the Earth's way of pushing the reset <laughs> button on us, you know. So. I've, I've, been be. say, I've been saying the exact same thing in almost those exact words. Yeah. Um, going back to what you were saying before, just, you know, about seven years ago, I got this dystonia thing. I was a saxophone player and quite, quite accomplished. And that happened to me. So I'm empathetic, you know, because it, it, it's, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. It's kind of crushing. Um, so all I can say is, like, it's going to pass. It's going to pass, you know? Yeah. It's tough now, you but know, it's fast. Yeah. And I, I, we've, we've played together once when you were playing saxophone, I believe at Art Landy's house. Uh, really? Mm -hmm. We just did a session. You were playing baritone saxophone and I, and we did a session with, with Art and Mark Miller and, uh, I was uh, playing Barry there. Huh? Yeah. You were playing Barry. It, it was, it was great. That's uh, so we played together at one time. And uh, that must've been really late in the game when I, cause I, uh, the thing started on clarinet and alto and then kind of, migrated through the instruments and it ended on Barry, I think. I, I tried yeah. to hang on the longest on Barry, but by February of 2013, I was, I was done. I couldn't make uh -huh. sense anymore. So wow. it had to be sometime it, right it around. It must have been right after I moved here. Yeah. yeah. Well. Drew, do you have any projects, uh, recordings, or um, things that, you know, once we're back to normal that you're looking forward to or it's yes uh so there are some things that uh, that i was looking forward to that unfortunately have been canceled but hopefully they'll get rescheduled in may i was going to have a week residency at uh, birdland in new york with the great clarinetist don byron um, oh, nice. but that has been canceled mm -hmm. uh so hopefully that'll be rescheduled because uh you know that that was a dream gig of mine and uh definitely looking forward to hopefully getting that back on the books at some point. Um, and another thing, speaking of Art Landy that I'm super excited about, we actually did our CD release show at the Muse at your guys' yeah. performance space. I was talking to Art this morning on the phone and he was in, I was saying, I'm about to do an interview with Pete and Claire. He's like, oh, I had a realization. Our, our album, uh, this group is called Flex. It's a trio with uh, Art and uh, the great bassist Gonzalo Tepa. Yeah. And it's all original music. And uh, this band is called Flex, and our record is called Resist the Eel Panda. And he was <laughs> like, I had a realization. Uh, we, we told the future on this pandemic thing. I said, what do you mean, Art? He said, well, uh, you know, the panda, it comes from China. And <laughs> the supposed origin of this, of this, uh, of this virus is China. And uh, I'll, I'm going to... Oh, and those record. markets sell eels. Oh, my God. Yeah, and so, like, if I, you know, like, you see this panda, and he's cute, but he, but he, has, a, he has this gross, like, virus thing yeah. coming out of his mouth. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you have to, and then there's a big, strong hand resisting <laughs> that, which is our social distancing, yeah, social distancing. Right. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> And then Art's wife, Aubrey, said this morning, she got on the phone and she's like, 
actually panda is is a known uh is a term for an unknown disease or illness in you know <laughs> so are you was, serious yes that is so, crazy oh my god so that's the other project that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, before this thing hit, I had booked um, several <clears throat> um, clinics and concerts in the Northwest at different colleges with this uh, trio in support of this album. So at this point, I mean, we're looking at October. Hopefully by then we'll be back to work and that will happen. But if it doesn't, we'll definitely be rescheduling that as well. So yeah, but those are the projects that I'm particularly excited about and and i was i just want to add i was there for the concert it was just fantastic and i've been listening to the cd in the car and so it was. great great stuff well is there anything you want to leave us with or the listeners with before we sign out um uh, do you mean do you want me to play a little bit more or well, you can uh, play a little bit more for sure or you know any words of wisdom or encouragement or yeah maybe i'll just say that um uh to all my music friends who are struggling believe me i know and i'm with you all and i love you all and uh we're gonna get through this eventually <clears throat> and uh and to all the listeners out there <laughs> when we get back to work please come to our gigs and support <laughs> us especially at clubs like the muse that Thank you. Exist to serve the purpose of artistic expression in the world because we are going to need that more than ever in the coming months and coming years. All right. So I think I'll just leave it there. Okay. All right, man. All right, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you for having us. We're going to stop recording right now.